in a village nestled between the great rivers of Africa where everyone knew everyone and gossip spread like wildfire. There lived a poor orphan named Agbo. She had lost her parents at a tender age and was left to fend for herself. Despite the hardship she faced, Agbo was a determined and hardworking girl. She had learned how to fish from her father and had become quite skilled at it. Every day, Agbo would paddle her canoe out to the river and haul in the day's catch. She would then roast the fish to perfection and sell them in the village market. Despite her hard work, Agbo faced ridicule. Some of the young men in the village would laugh at her and say, Fishing is not for women. They would point fingers at her and call her the dirty fish girl because she smelled like fish. She felt like they were right, that she was somehow less of a person because she was a fisherwoman. She began to doubt herself and her abilities. Agbo was the best and she caught more fishes. The men laughed at her out of jealousy and deep in their hearts they knew she was way better than them. No man in this village will marry you. You smell like rotten fish. Agbo, fishing is not for women. It is for strong men like us. Leave this thing and go home. Go and look for something else to do. If you don't know what to do, go and sell oranges in the market. Agbo tried to ignore them, but it was hard. One day, one of the young men entered her kino as usual and started insulting her. But Agbo got really angry. She insulted all of them and called them lazy fools. From that day, Agbo started going to a different part of the river a deeper path, quite a distance from the village, just to fish in peace. And this part of the river really favored her. She started catching more fishes, even bigger ones. It was as if the gods had smiled on her. She was so happy and shocked. Whenever she caught any big fish, she would say to herself, I will make pepper soup with this one. This is for me and me alone. She would roast the smaller fishes as usual and then journey to the village market. She made very little money from all this, sometimes no money at all. The women in the village did not make life easy for her. They would take fishes and when it was time to pay, they would start calling her names and giving silly excuses. You this dirty smelling fish girl, you brought fish to me with your hair so open and you expect me to pay you without your dirty hair. If you don't cover the hair, I will not pay you. To fear aqua. Because of the daily complaints from the market women, Agbo started covering her hair thinking that would make them pay her and also stop calling her names. But the women persisted. Look at your mouth. Leave this place now. Small girl like you. I wonder what you want to use money for. Better bring fish for me tomorrow. I will pay you in my own time. Did you pay Agbo today? Why will I pay her? What does she need money for? Small girl like that. If her mother was alive, would she ask her mother for money because of ordinary fish? I beg, let her get out. She's just a silly dirty girl. Agbo was so sad, but there was nothing she could do. She would quietly go back home and console herself with her fish pepper soup, smiling and cooking, also hoping for the best. Some evenings, she would take a stroll around the village, but some villagers would point fingers, calling her the dirty fish girl. But one fateful day, while Agbo was out fishing, she caught a very big fish. It looked pregnant. She had never seen anything like that before. She was so shocked. Later that evening, she prepared the smaller fishes and roasted them as usual. Then she started preparing the big fish for herself. While she was cutting it open, she saw a golden calabash in the belly of the fish, shining brightly. She was so surprised. She removed it feeling a strong pull towards it and admiring its beauty. She felt a sense of peace when she held it in her hands, so she decided to keep the calabash in her room. As she continued with her cooking, she decided to use the calabash as a saving box. Whenever she gets paid by the market women, that night, she placed the calabash beside her bed and she slept off. The following morning, Agbo decided to open the calabash and to her surprise, it was filled with money. She was so happy. At the same time, it felt like a dream. She spent the entire day looking at the calabash. That day, she slept really early, hoping when she wakes up, it will all be a dream. But the next day, she opened the calabash again and the money was still there. 
That was when it dawned on her. She quickly filled her wooden bucket with water and she went to bath. After that, she took some coins and she went to the market to do some shopping. She bought so many African prints and nice dresses. When she got back home, she admired all that she had gotten. Smiling happily, she opened the calabash again and discovered the money had multiplied. The more she took out of the calabash, the more it multiplied. She stopped selling fish. She spent the next few days buying so many colorful beads and accessories. Every day, she would be in her room trying out so many beautiful new dresses even her skin began to glow within a very short period she had gotten so many beautiful handbags so many colorful beads and so many dresses and every day she would go around the village gallivanting and drawing attention to herself hello agbo is this you hey agbo you look so beautiful. Agbo, you are shining. She would smile and walk to more places. Agbo, hope you did not steal this clothes you're wearing now. How come? Eh? How did you get money to buy this kind of beautiful clothes? Agbo, hope you did not steal this so because I will be the first to expose you. Wonders will never end. My daughter told me she saw Agbo, the dirty girl, wearing a very beautiful dress, walking around the village yesterday. So I wonder, how did she get such money to buy such a beautiful dress? The way my daughter described that dress, eh? Hmm. You mean Agbo, that smelling thing that was begging us just a few days ago to pay her for fish? No, it is a lie. I don't believe you. My daughter cannot lie to me now. Umba, no, 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 no. She has never lied to me before. My daughter saw her and she ran to the house yesterday evening and she told me. While they were busy gossiping and arguing, Agbo showed up behind them and they were all so shocked and dumbfounded. They could not believe their eyes. Agbo smiled and walked away. Some lazy young men in the village saw how beautiful and rich she had become. They started trooping to her house begging for marriage. Agbo built a very big compound with so many beautiful huts and as she moved into her new place, she stood inside the hut thinking of marrying so many men and putting them in different huts. People would stare at her in amazement, wondering where her wealth came from. But Agbo did not care. She was too busy enjoying her new life to worry about what others thought. She became a philanthropist in the village, spending lavishly on unnecessary things and shopping for her numerous men. Agbo developed an insatiable urge. She had become careless and foolish and she allowed money to control her. She foolishly married five men. They would cook for her, wash her clothes, sweep and tell her stories. They were all after her money. They never truly cared for her. She also had other men who followed her around the village like bodyguards. Her husbands all had their separate huts and she would visit them in tombs every night. Your wife is here. Tonight is your night. That was her night routine. But she had a favorite. His name was E.K. He was the best in bedroom matters. He pleased her so much one evening. She got carried away and she told him the secrets of her wealth. She foolishly trusted him. But he betrayed her and told one of the other husbands whom he was close to. A few days later, they searched the entire house while she was out gallivanting. They found her golden calabash and ran away from the village with it. Later on, Agbo discovered she cried and broke down. Then she realized how foolish she had been. She never invested or saved any money. All she had was a house filled with so many handbags, so many colorful beads and clothes. When her remaining three husbands discovered she no longer had money, they all packed their bags and abandoned her. The villagers also laughed gossiped and called her names. Agbo learned a valuable lesson from her experience. She learned that greed and materialism can lead to downfall. Her excessive love for wealth and material possessions led her to make poor decisions which ultimately resulted in her losing the golden calabash. She also learned that hard work and determination are key to success. Agbo sold some of the clothes and handbags. She opened a very big store in the village 
and she continued with her business. She expanded her fish business and supplied fishes across neighboring villages. She also employed people to assist her. But few weeks later, she discovered she was pregnant. At first, she was confused. She wondered who was responsible among her five ex-husbands. She eventually decided and promised herself that she was going to raise her child with love, regardless of the situation. She eventually gave birth to two beautiful twin girls as she raised them with so much love. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe. See you.